I'm sure you'll all be absolutely shocked to know that I've been accumulating books again. So I'm back with another book haul. Do I have a problem? Yes, I do. Do I plan to deal with that problem? No, not really. No, I don't. So let me just show you what I bought. So we have The Heart of Betrayal by Mary E. Pearson, which is actually book two in the Remnant Chronicles series. Uh, I read book one in March and I want to read book two in April. It's actually part of my Owls, which I will link my TBR up above for you. So I wanted to pick up book two in this series. Yes, another lovely floppy paperback. Can't tell you what this one is about, but book one follows a princess who is going to be entered into an arranged marriage with a neighbouring kingdom for political reasons. But she doesn't want to marry someone she's never met and doesn't love and she decides that she's going to run away and so she does that and then she's pursued by the prince that she was due to marry and an assassin but we don't know which one is which and there's a romance plot line a little bit of a love triangle it's pretty tropey but it's also pretty old this one came out when did it come out late 2000s oh 2015 more recent than i realized anyway it's very tropey but i enjoyed book one and i don't recommend reading it via audio because it's a full cast of characters so you know which is the prince and which is the assassin straight away which ruins the fun a little bit but I did still enjoy it so there's that. Then I also picked up the Infernal Devices series by Cassandra Clare. So there's a bit of a story with this right? I read the original Mortal Instruments series back in maybe 2009 or 2010 and I, I'm pretty sure I read all six of them and I did like them but I didn't love them. There wasn't anything particularly amazing, especially about the last three. I liked the first three fine, not especially memorable. I do remember what happens in that series because of the various adaptations that have happened since but it didn't have a massive impact on me and so I never continued with the series. But then Fairy Loot, several months ago now, I can't remember exactly when, announced that they were doing a Chain of Gold special edition box and there's been a lot of buzz about Chain of Gold uh, coming out on Booktube and Bookstagram and basically everywhere books are talked about and I have to say I was intrigued and then I realised that it follows, Chain of Gold follows the children of the characters in The Infernal Devices and then I read a little bit more about what the infernal devices are actually about and it sounds pretty interesting so i decided to buy the trilogy and binge it before reading chain of gold because apparently you can read chain of gold without reading this but if you then go back and read this you'll be spoiled so i figured i might as well just read this first and so i plan to do a reading challenge video reading these three books at some point. So I got this lovely boxed set. Can I remember what this is about off the top of my head? Probably not. Let's see. So Clockwork Angel is book one and it says on the back, when Tessa Gray arrives in England during the reign of Queen Victoria, something terrifying is waiting for her in London's downworld, where vampires, warlocks and other supernatural folk stalk the gaslit streets. Friendless and hunted, Tessa seeks refuge with the Shadow Hunters, a band of demon hunters. Drawn ever deeper into their world, she finds herself fascinated by and torn between two best friends, who I believe are Will and Jim. I have heard a bit about this series and it's kind of impossible at this point I think to avoid all kinds of spoilers so I've probably been spoiled for at least the romantic plot line here but that's okay I don't know enough about it to really be too worried about that and essentially it's just a shadow hunter story but set in Victorian London so that sounds kind of fun. Next up I picked up a couple of middle grade books that I heard Lexi from the channel Alexandra Rosalyn talk about in her recent middle grade reads 
video so I will link that down below because I found that really really useful and so I recommend that video too. The first one is The House with Chicken Legs by Sophie Anderson which is essentially a Baba Yaga story and since I apparently am somewhat obsessed with Russian history etc at the moment this seemed like a really interesting one to pick up and so I want to read this one. I really do like reading middle grade and I need to read more of it. And then the other one is A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison. And I'll just read you the back because it's very short. Three sisters trapped by an ancient curse, three magical objects with the power to change their fate. Will they be enough to break the curse or will they lead the sisters even deeper into danger? And it just sounds fun and whimsical, they both do, and like I said, I really like middle grade fiction and A Pinch of Magic seems to have somewhat Russian inspirations as well, or at least there's there's a Matryoshka doll in the top corner, so I'm just looking forward to reading both of these. Then we have Into the Crooked Place by Alexandra Christo. I've read her other book, To Kill a Kingdom, last year, sort of summertime last year, that's a sort of Little Mermaid retelling but playing more towards the more traditional evil siren story. This is a little bit different. This is also fantasy but it's not a retelling. Uh, it's a group of four unlikely characters band together to save their, sit their city which you know, it sounds fairly basic and tropey, but I did like Alexandra's writing style. So I wanted to give it a go and support an author I already know I like. Then I've been really wanting to get into reading anthologies. I don't know, there's just something attractive to me about reading a collection of short stories. So I saw this one on Wordery for a pretty decent price, so I decided to pick it up. It's called A Thousand Beginnings and Endings. It's edited by Ellen O and Elsie Chapman and has stories by Renee Adier, Elsie Chapman, Sona Charapotra, Preeti Chibba, Roshani Chochki, Aliette de Bodard, Melissa de la Cruz, Julie Kagawa, Rahul Kanakia, Laurie M. Lee, E.C. Myers, Cindy Pon, Aisha Saeed, Shveta Thakra and Alyssa Wong. I don't know all of those authors but I've heard of a few of them and these are 15 retellings of Asian myths and legends which sounds really really interesting and like you heard there's quite a lot of short stories in here and it's not super long of a book it's about 320 something pages so I'm really interested to give an anthology a try and if you read anthologies and have any recommendations then please do let me know down below because I am really interested in getting into anthologies. And then the last thing I picked up is a little bit different and it's a tarot card deck. So I'm not religious or spiritual in any way, shape or form but I do suffer with anxiety sometimes a lot of the time and so meditation can be quite useful for me and setting intentions for myself can be quite useful for me to help regulate my mood if I'm struggling so I decided to give something that G from the channel Book Roast does a go so she uses tarot cards and the meanings of tarot cards to help her set that intention and use it as a meditative process so I thought that I would give that a go plus I really like tarot card art and I use tarot cards as bookmarks the ones that come in the fairy loot boxes so I kind of wanted to buy a full tarot card deck so that I could use it as bookmarks so I'll show you just a few of these cards because they really are very very pretty So there you go, those are just a few and I think they're really pretty and I'm kind of just, yeah, using them as a form of meditation to see if that will help me a little bit at the moment. Let's not talk about that. And that's it. Those are all the books that I bought recently. If you've read any of these, let me know what you thought of them down below. I'm really looking forward to reading all of them and I'm hoping to get to them fairly soon although my TBR for the owls in April is already set so I might not get to these until sort of the end of April or May but 
these are some books I want to read in the relatively near future. So, like I said, if you've read them, let me know what you think. And that's it for this one. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you like this video and want to see more like this from me, then do think about hitting that subscribe button. And I hope to see you here again soon. Thanks. Bye.